Greetings hobbies, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this tutorial we're going to be creating a futuristic ammo crate. So this is a nice example of something that should be relatively easy, sort of battlefield scatter that you might want to include as some sort of scenery. But as always with things like this, where you're going to have a lot of them, little choices make a really big difference. So let's get started with this. And I'm going to just put in some dimensions. So I'm going to do this something like 30 millimeters by 20. And then let's do 15 in depth, something like that. We can play around with this later, but that looks about right for a large sized ammunition crate. So I'm just going to press N to get rid of the M panel. Now we're straight into this and we're going to have an important decision to make. And that is going to be about beveling this. And this is actually really key to the whole idea of trying to set a bit of a narrative or just identifying this as something a little bit futuristic. And I'll show you what I mean with these two cubes. First one, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to go to the edges. I'm going to select one of the edges. I'm going to shift and G to select similar by length. So now I've got all of the four edges and I'm just going to control and B and put in a really small bevel. Let's say something like eight segments. I'm going to keep that really small. To be honest, it doesn't need eight segments. And then I'm going to do the same on this one. So I'm going to come into edge, gain, shift and G, and then by length, and then control and B, and I'm going to do a larger bevel. Let's up that to something like 16, just because it's a bit bigger. Now, these look like fairly minor differences here. We've got a very thin bevel and a very wide bevel. And while this doesn't seem big, it's going to have quite a big representation for what the material is as you look at this visually. I mean, obviously, we've got to 3D model this without any color, and you've got to try and tell the person looking at this what this is. And hopefully you can see that there's a big difference here. And I just realized that actually we needed to apply the scale for these. So I'm just going to shift an A and apply the scale. The, the bevel is so small on this one that it doesn't really matter. And then shift G by length. And then there we go. So let's even that up a bit. That's better. But these bevels give quite a different look to these cubes. And it should also imply a different material. For example, if we look at this with a relatively harsh edge, that is typically something that you'd see on maybe formed or bent metal shapes. Whereas this, especially if we go to the bottom edge and put something in similar there, you'll notice that this looks a little bit more like something like formed plastic, like those hard plastic carry cases. And if I quickly shade that smooth, that should look even clearer. Now, being that this is meant to be something a little futuristic, I think I'm probably going to stick with this. Just some sort of polymer that's been put together and formed. So we're just going to delete this one out. And I'm actually going to take that idea and exaggerate it even more. So let's go back to our edges. Shift and G, length. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a single segment bevel, what we would normally call a chamfer. About a deep, pretty decent size, let's say something like there. And then what I'm going to do is select all of those edges again and then bevel those and then bring that up to somewhere in the region of eight. And that seems pretty reasonable. So we've got a chamfer and then that has been made a little bit softer on the edges by adding in this extra bevel. And I'm just going to select the bottom one by clicking Alt on that edge and then we'll do a similar thing there. That one probably does need to be 16. So we've got this nice rounded looking object. Now, some people are probably having a bit of a harsh attack at this with the idea that I'm doing this destructively. And what I mean by that is that I've not used a bevel modifier, which I could do by adding in that over here. And we are gonna use a bevel modifier later, but I just quite like doing this to begin with. And it actually gets a little bit of a pain adding in all these extra bits with a bevel modifier. So we sort of have to make this decision. Also, and I'm not going to focus this in this tutorial, I do have Mesh Machine, and what that allows me to do is if I go there and then control to there and press Y and unbevel, I can actually unbevel this if I chose to. So if you've got Mesh Machine, this isn't quite as permanent as it would seem. Now, speaking of add-ons, I'm going to be using two add-ons in this tutorial. The first one is going to be Machine Tools. I've talked about Machine Tools a lot. It is free if you go to Gumroad, and there's a playlist in the top right-hand corner and in the description of some of the tutorials I've gone through with that. And I'm also going to be using Box Cutter and Hard Ops. And again, there are some tutorials in the top right-hand corner if you want to have a look at what I'm doing there in a little bit more detail. Now, I think we need a top to this. So I'm going to take the top of this and just press four. This is using machine tools. So that's now copied that entirety of that top. And I'm going to press E to extrude that out somewhere about there. In fact, actually, let's do that 1.5. I'm going to do that exactly. And then in object mode, I'm going to 
press Shift and Z so I can see where the object is below it. And I'm going to then press S, Shift and Z to lock it on the Z axis, which means that the Z axis isn't going to change. I've got this fixed thickness and I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. But because the Y axis is a little bit longer than the X axis, we can see that's sort of looking a little bit distorted. So then I'm going to press S and X to try and even that out. I'm just going to do that by I, something like there, Shift and Z, and we've got our lid. In fact, that might be a little bit much. So let's actually scale that a little bit in. Don't want to have too much extra hanging over the edge. It doesn't really seem to make sense where you're probably going to want to stack crates together. Something like there. Okay, pretty happy with that. Now at this point that looks all well and good, but it's definitely a bit boring. And if we're going to be looking at some scenery on a gaming table from a distance, we want to make things a little bit more interesting. And we also want to reinforce this idea that this is some sort of hard plastic. And these hard plastic cases have a tendency to have ridges on them to try and add a little bit of structural support. So we're going to add that in. And for that, we're going to be using a combination of techniques. But I'm not going to be straight away going to box cutter. And let's go into this and we'll explain why. So I'm going to select this face. I'm going to do the same things we did by pressing 4 to extract that face. And then all I want to do is press I to make that a little bit smaller. So I'm using I instead of S because it allows me to get even offsets on all of the edges. So let's go somewhere like there and then go to edge mode, alt select that edge and delete and vertices so we've just got that. And I can go back into object mode and I'm gonna press G and X to move that out slightly just so we don't get that face fighting that we can see that was causing that distortion. Now at this point, again, face mode, I'm going to press E to extrude that inwards and let's go for one millimeter. So I'm going to press one and minus to go inwards. And I think just because of this shading, we've got a slight problem here. If I come up to my viewport overlays and put in face orientation, we can see I've got this set so that my faces turn this light blue color if it's meant to be on the inside. And that's a problem there. So all I'm going to do is go into vertex mode, A to select all of them, shift and N, and that's going to flip the normals to the correct way and that's not going to cause many problems now when I'm booleaning. So next step, let's get this. So I'm just going to select this object. So the one that I want to be the cutter first, then shift select the one that's going to be cut and then control and minus and then that's going to create a difference boolean. And you'll notice it causes a bit of complications here because we can now see that these faces are sort of the inside of that object that's now see-through. So just to stop that confusion, I'm going to do that. Now, if you don't have ball tools, which is what I use to do this, just go to edit preferences, type in ball, and then here you go, you've got ball tool. So just tick that and then save preferences. And you can use control and then minus on the number pad to do these difference booleans. Now at this point, what's great about this is this is not something that's permanent. I can actually still G and move that around. If I decide that I don't want it as deep, I could sort of G and X and bring that so it's less deep. So this is why some things you want to do non-destructively. And a lot of times that can cause some confusion. For example, I did these bevels destructively and I'm doing this one non-destructively. You sort of get used to that as a workflow as you go and you sort of make decisions about what you want. And at certain times, you're going to transition from one to another. For example, we're going to do this non-destructively, but at some point, we're going to have to start getting a bit destructive. So at the moment, we've got this inset and we want to add these structural ridges. So I'm just going to press Alt and W to open up box cutter. I'm going to press D and then I'm going to change this to an Engon. And I want this to be non-cyclic, which means that effectively, I'm just going to draw a line. And you can see that Engon line. And I'm just going to click somewhere in that corner all the way down and you'll notice that this snaps to 15 degree increments. I'm going to press control so it's not quite at 15 degrees. Take my mouse off there and I've got my line. At that point I can press tab to say yep that's what I want but I still have the controls over this so I'm going to press T and thicken that up a bit. Something about mm, not too thick maybe about there. Something like that and then I can extrude that back from that circle and you can see that we've cut this out. Now what's really important here, I press enter, is that I did not cut or do anything to the original cube or the crate. In fact, I'm gonna F2 and call that crate. So it's really easy to see. What I was doing is I was actually cutting something out of this cutter here. So this is the insetting object. I'm just gonna shade that flat because the shading went a bit weird. So this was the object that's been inset into this. And what I've done is I've then cut 
out of or cut this away from that which effectively just returns the original cube because now we don't have something cutting it there and that's a really good trick to do don't try adding things to the crate when it's much easier to affect the cutter because now again this is all still non-destructive and it's just a nicer workflow and it gives you some options which we're going to use later now i do want this on the other side so i'm going to press q so this is using hard ops i'm going to go to ever scroll so i'm going to select this and I'm going to shift select, well it doesn't really matter, but let's go for the crate so that I've now got access to that origin point which is here. Alt and X, and this is using hard ops again. And then I want to press D so that we have a modifier. So I'm going to bring in a modifier and what that means is effectively I'm just mirroring it to the other side. Now if I just undo that, one important thing about this, you do need to, when you Alt and X, you click on the side that you want. So I want this side to be mirrored. So it's a little bit counterintuitive for some people. So we've now got that. And you will also see that Hardops has brought this all over to the cutters collection. And this makes things quite easy because if I want to hide all of this or all of the cutters, that is the first collection. The cutters are the second selection. So if I just press shift and two, it will hide those. I've got this here. So I'm gonna press W to get out of box cutter. And we're going to have a look at this and try and fix some bits that are, well, let's just say not quite as interesting as they could be. And also, it's not helping us sell this as a plastic object. And the reason for that is, well, one, there's no bevel. We'll deal with that in a second. But also, you generally don't get these perfect 90 degree insets in these sort of hard plastic objects. I think it's something to do with suction and how they're formed, don't know. But either way, it's gonna make things a little bit more interesting and a little bit more visually appealing to fiddle around with this. So again, I'm gonna press Q and ever scroll and get to this. But to start fiddling around with these back faces, we are gonna to have to apply this. Now, this would be normally the point where I save this in case I want to come back and do something else later because I might have realized I don't like this. So all I'm gonna do is press apply all, and now if I press forward slash to go into isolation mode, I've got access to all the geometry here. And this means that we can start doing some nice things. So what I'm gonna do is go into face mode, and I'm gonna select the back face of this part. Forward slash to get out of isolation mode. So I'm gonna press S, and I'm gonna start scaling this in. Now, just in case you've done something weird, and you might have done, if you find if I go into x-ray mode, that this starts moving, what you might have done is you might have select this to be to the 3D cursor. And if I press S there, you'll notice it starts scaling in towards the cursor. And you don't want that because we've selected this as one millimeter deep. We don't want to change that. So we want that to be the median point. And that means that now, if I press S, it's not gonna scale towards that origin. So let's have a look side on. Let's scale that somewhere about there. Yeah, that should look good. And then I'm gonna do the same to these other objects as well. So I'm gonna select that and I'm going to again press S somewhere about there, trying to keep it approximately the same. But you will notice that this angle here, I just get that, that there and this there doesn't look quite equal. And that's just because of the way the scaling works. So all I'm gonna do is go into vertex mode, GG to move that down a little bit. And by pressing G twice, it's confining it to that edge. And somewhere about there looks a little bit better. And then Alt and X again, and then let's bring that over to the other side. So that has now activated a mirror modifier that's gonna keep there. So if I change anything on one side, it's gonna do it to the other side as well. Now at this point, we've got this and we've got our cutters being taken out of it, but we haven't applied those cutters yet. You can still see the Boolean here. I'm gonna press Shift and two to get rid of those cutters. And what we want here is we want to have a bevel. We want these edges here, these points that are a little bit too hard looking to be like what we've done here. Maybe not as exaggerated and big, but we do want to have that bevel. So what we're gonna do is press Q using hard ops and just bring in a bevel. And all I'm gonna do is I can slide my mouse left or right to try and change the amount that that's beveling. And I'm just gonna scroll up to change that to about eight segments. And we want something about there, looks about good. Let's go for about there. Now looking at this, this is okay, but again, I don't quite like these corners here. That one there, there, there. Okay, they're all a little bit extreme, maybe that one as well. So I'm gonna actually go in and start fixing these. And what's really nice about this is because we've got this limit method of the bevel being at an angle of 30 degrees, if I start fiddling around with these, this should mean that 
will put a bevel that won't then get beveled by this modifier. So let's Q and ever scroll. So all I'm gonna do is select one of these edges and I'm just gonna press Control and B and bevel that. I think 16 is probably a little bit much. Let's take that down to about eight. Something about there maybe. No, actually maybe a bit bigger than that. Let's go somewhere about there, quite like that. And then we're gonna do the same for this one. And then here. And you'll notice I'm doing these all slightly different sizes because in reality, that's what's gonna happen. Okay, these bevels are put in for a reason when these boxes are being designed. And I think it's again to do with the way these are formed, but they're not all gonna be the same size. So doing this makes it look a little bit more real. Whereas if you bevel everything exactly the same, it just looks a little off. Now we have got a few issues here. We've got some, what you could consider shading issues, but actually they're more complicated than this. This is actually showing that the bevel is not working quite right in these areas. So there's something we need to fix. And we can fix that in a number of ways. Firstly, we can have a look at the bevel here. And we've got quite a big offset, so we could reduce that or up that. And the other thing that we can play with is we can play with this angle, which we can bring down so that we've got this shading a lot better. So that looks much nicer. Now, there is one other thing that's not actually causing a problem in this instance, but I do want to mention uh, because it might, because I'm going to be honest, I don't quite know how Blender decides where it's going to put certain lines that it needs to add in. So we're just going to talk through that really quickly. So all I'm going to do is apply all and I'm going to go into edge mode. And you can see some edges have miraculously appeared. We've got an edge here, we've got an edge here, one there and one there. And at the moment, these aren't causing any problems. They seem to have gone quite well into our different points and they're not causing any issues with our bevels but they can. I've seen these do weird things where they try to put one line from here into there and then it interferes with the bevel. And you can never really tell what Blender's gonna do. Like, why did it put that one there? Who knows? So it's quite nice to control this. And if this does become an issue for you, it might, this might be a good way of fixing it. So what I'm gonna do is come to edge mode. So you can still see here that we've got our cutter. I've come back to the point where this hasn't been applied. And I'm just gonna go into edge mode and I'm gonna press Control and R and bring in an edge loop, and just bring it down somewhere to about there. So it cuts nicely through these at a relatively good angle. I will be honest, this probably isn't perfect. It'd be better if this was perpendicular at 90 degrees. Same with that, but that would be something relatively easy to sort if you wanted to. But importantly, it's away from the corners as much as possible. And now if I go into object mode and apply all, you can see that here, this has caused less of a problem because it wouldn't interfere with any of the bevels in any way. So that's quite a nice way of fixing this if you need to. So we've got a pretty good looking crate here. It's got some visual interest. Having this scaled inset makes it look much nicer. It's definitely more visually appealing. And actually when painting, you'll be able to do more with this. Now we're gonna do something similar to the top, but we're gonna come across another problem here if we're gonna put these points in. So let's have a quick look at that and start to see what we can do. So if I go into face mode, and I'm just gonna select the top face four again to take that geometry as a new object. So again, it is now separate. That's gonna be a real pain to select. So I'm just gonna go back and I'm going to G and Z that up just the tiniest amount. So now it is much easier to select. And we're gonna make this inset here, similar to the one we've got but we're gonna to need to make some decisions about this. And that is because if I go into face mode and type I, we're gonna see we're gonna get a lot of fighting as these vertices start going over one another. Now, Mesh Machine has a way of fixing this. So if you do have Mesh Machine, just go into edge mode, select one edge, control select to the other edge, Y, and then unfuck, and then we can move that back around. But just in case we don't have that, what we're gonna do is go into vertex mode and I'm gonna select those vertices and I'm gonna press shift and one to merge at the center. Same there, same there, same there and so on. And then I'm gonna alt select all the outside bits and delete those vertices. So we've got this inner part that we can then inset. And now if I want to, I can press S to scale that bigger or smaller. Now you'll notice this is doing that problem where it's scaling into it. I'm gonna shift and Z. I want to have that scaling just on the 
median point. Well, actually, no, it's not going to like that because I'm not in face mode. So if you do want to, you can just press S, Shift and Z, and it's going to constrain it to the Z axis. So it's not going in any further. Now, I'm going to come across one more problem here, which is even though we've fixed this, these vertices or these corners are very close together. And that means that they're going to have a lot of problems when we start to bevel this. So actually, what I want to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to shift them one again to merge those together. So we don't have that as a problem. And then I'm going to come to my top down view and I'm just going to scale this so that it looks about right. And we've got a pretty even thickness on all edges. That looks fine. And then face mode. Oh, and that was me forgetting to press shift and Z. So back in, scale, shift and Z, so it doesn't scale in on the Z axis. And there we go. So now it's the correct height. And then face mode, E to extrude that down. Let's go one minus. And again, we've got this problem here where we've got some odd shading. So A, shift and N to flip the normals and everything's good. And then select the cutter, then select the lid, control and minus. And we've got that going on and again exactly the same process here i'm not going to do anything different so we're going to do a similar thing here except for this time i'm going to come from above and then alt and w let's put a cut down the center so i'm going to press d and bring in a box cut i'm going to press Control, select for, oh no that's not right i need to press d and make sure that the draw origin is in the center and then and we want to go somewhere there and I want to scale it on the y-axis. So let's bring that out. In fact, we can just G and Y that across. So there we go. So we've got that being cut out from the center. Enter to confirm it. And then I actually want to have some sort of raised or higher object here. Let's just uh, shade that flat so we can see this a bit more clearly. I want to have something in the middle here, which would be effectively what is in the crate. So Let's D and back to an Engon, and then I'm just going to do something like that. There, there. Cut through there, and then we're going to mirror that. So Q, ever scroll. I want this object here. So then I want to shift select this box where we've got our origin in the center. Alt X D to bring in a modifier, which effectively means a mirror modifier. And then we've got that there. So let's H and H for that. So we've now got where we'd be writing the information of what's in the crate. Now actually thinking about this, now that I've done this here, I probably actually do want to re-instigate these parts here. So I'm just going to Q and ever scroll and bring that in. Edge there, and I want to select that edge. That edge, why am I doing it this way? I just want to select similar length. And then Shift and B. So let's do one thing there. And then that should get caught by the bevel when we do that. And in fact, I think I actually want to put something in across here. So let's ever scroll, select the object, D, we want a box, we want it to go in the center, and then we can press control, and then let's sort that out somewhere, region of there, and then S on the X, oh no, Y, apologies, and then G on the Y to bring that all the way across into yeah, I think that looks a bit more interesting. Okay, so we're going to go for this cutter and we're going to apply all. So before you apply, this would be the point to save it if you wanted to come back to it. In actual fact, I think, oops, let's press W to get our box cutter. I think I actually want S and Y, that to be a little bit wider, somewhere around there. And now we just need to do exactly the same thing again as we did beforehand. So I'm going to go into face mode, select that face there. So the bottom face, let's go to top down view and then let's scale that in a little bit there. Ooh, something funky is going on there. What has happened here? That's interesting. I don't know why that's gone on, but let's bring that back and press one to merge that together. Okay. Oh, and maybe that's happened here as well. I think that might have just been a vertex that I didn't catch when I was combining everything together, but hopefully that should have fixed it. 
Anyway, Alt X and we're gonna symmetrize to that side, Alt X and then we're gonna symmetrize to that side and we've got that all sorted. And hopefully that should be that problem solved. Then I'm just gonna press H to hide that and let's start having a look at bringing in our bevel that we want, just like we've got down here. And we'll notice we don't have one on this side, we're gonna mirror that later. So Q and bevel, and we're just gonna bring in a bevel somewhere around there. Again, not too much. How many segments have we got? Three, let's up that to eight. Something like there would probably be about right. Yeah, that looks nice. So we've got that going on and yeah, it's looking pretty good. Right, one last thing that we're gonna do. And at this point, I think that lid is done. So we're gonna need to do something here on this side as well. And this is just from a practicality point of view as well as an interesting sort of thing to look at. We need some way of moving these boxes and let's put in something like some handholds or something like that. Now, now I'm only doing this to demonstrate why 3D printing work is gonna sometimes be very different to CG work. I'm just gonna press Alt and W, make sure I'm in box mode, and I could just draw some sort of box here, take it in a bit, and what's really cool is I could just press X to make a slice however deep I want it, hit enter, and then we've got this cool slice. And then even better than that, I could actually take this object here and I could just cut the bottom off of it, and we've got this nice looking sort of handle as if you could maybe pull this bit out and that's where you've got it. And I'm gonna mirror this on the other side so it's as if people could grab this with both hands. But this is not gonna work for 3D printing. If I come back here, you can see all of this fighting between the faces that we've talked about. And that's because they're sort of on top of each other, but they don't really work well together. And if we try to merge this together, this would cause problems. So there are ways of dealing with this. You'll notice also I've got all of these booleans happening here, so I don't need all of those because some of them are from the booleans from there. Let me just double check which. Yeah, that makes no difference. That one does make a difference. That one does make a difference, so we want to get rid of that one. So to try and sort this out, we are going to have to apply this. So let's apply all. And then I'm going to go into vertex mode and then W to come out of box cutter. I'm just going to select those vertices and G and Y and just take that much further into the object and that should help there. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna scale this down slightly because 3D printing wise, that is not gonna show unless you've got something like an 8K mini printer and even then I'm not sure it will. So I'm just gonna press Shift and S and I'm gonna bring the object origin to the geometry so it's now there and I can press S and scale this down. So now we've got a bit more of a gap here. In fact, let's G and Z that down. So we've got a bit more of a gap so that's gonna look much better when it's printed. And we've got this object coming further in, so we should get less problems now when we do this. So let's see, so I'm gonna Alt X and do a modifier and bring that over. So now we've got the hole on both sides and we've got the extra bit. And then I need this one here, Shift select this, Alt X, and we want that over there. And then we will need it on this side as well. So Alt X, flip, and then select those that, Alt X, and then flip. So we've now got our crate, and it's looking pretty good. All we need to do is Boolean everything together. So my order of operations for this is generally I try to apply everything before I Boolean things together. Don't know why, it just seems to work better. So I'm gonna apply all there, apply all there, and apply all there. Select the handles, shift click here, oops, I nearly forgot we had this to deal with. Okay, that really is a mess. Right, let's have a quick look at this. So I'm just gonna go into edge mode and then there and control. Okay. Right, this is a bit of an experience thing, but this sort of weird directions going on normally is created when you've got overlapping vertices and you bevel. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna undo this to the point where we haven't actually applied all the modifiers. And let's see if we can fix this. So I'm gonna go into vertex mode, A, M, and merge by distance, and 16 vertices, yep, okay, that's fixed that. So that actually wasn't too bad to fix in that instance. I just need to go back and sort some of these bits out. So uh, G and Z, that was a little bit down there. And then I just need to reinstigate the modifiers that I'd brought in. So 
There. Right. So actually that wasn't too bad a fix. So at this point I'm just speeding this up and I'm going through and applying everything again just so that we've got everything confirmed before we start booleaning everything together. I just find this causes much less issues and it makes it easier to predict what's going to happen. Next let's select the handles and then control and plus and let's apply that. Let's check this out because this was the one that was most likely to cause the issues and no we've got a nice clean boolean there so that's good so that's fix that and then lid control and plus h to hide the object apply all and we've got our crate right let's just double check this we're going to go to 3d print if you don't have this edit preference and just type in 3d dash print and there you go you do need the dash otherwise it doesn't come up Obviously, if you're not doing this for 3D printing, this is totally irrelevant, but I'm going to check all and we've got a non-flat face. Let's have a look at this. Now, this isn't actually the worst thing in the world in many instances. So we've got a few and actually that's just being caused by that vertex there. So if I just go to there and there and click one, so that's the way the booleans have brought everything together. Where's the other ones? Uh, check all again and then four at the top here. So these are just there, 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 right. Okay, now this takes some experience, but this is not going to cause a problem printing. It's actually being caused by this line that's going across here. Uh, in fact, actually, if I go into vertex mode and alt select there and then press GG, I should be able to, oops, turn on auto merge vertices. And if I just GG and then slide them along, they'll merge together there. And then I need to do the same thing probably over here. And they should have merged check all and hopefully that's gone there we go so that wasn't too big a problem uh, i would say like i said you didn't really need to fix that you could have just taken that into 3d builder in microsoft and that would have been fine it would have sorted that out no problem so here we go a 3d printable weapons crate Hopefully you found that useful. I'd had a few requests to show a complete workflow from beginning to end up to the point where it could be 3D printed. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you did, please click the like button or if you haven't already, subscribe for more great content.